Hey guys, welcome back to the videos. Today we're actually going to be installing some wheels and tires again for the Civic. I didn't like the way the old ones look, so we're actually going to be uh, installing new ones that I ordered online from Fitment Industries. So shout out Fitment Industries for delivering them on time and getting them here safely. Uh, and I can't wait to get them put on. So you're actually going to see that in this video along with a few other things. I'll get to those later on in the video. So. I hope y'all enjoy and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe for more and I will see y'all at the end of the video. Alright, so these are the old wheels that I took off of my Civic. They're the stock wheels, but they're wrapped in Toyo Extensas HP2s. And these are 215 45-17s. And then these are the new wheels. They're the Autons, and they are the 235 40-18s. These are actually, they're 18 inch by 9.5 wheels and certified Adhan so we're gonna stick those on and see what they look like and I do want to mention that they are the Falcon Azenus tires that are wrapped on it so before we can install the wheels we're gonna put on these Timken wheel bearings because I messed mine up because of the camber I believe of these wheels uh, they sat too tucked up and so it messed up my wheel bearings and they're probably honestly just old because the car the car has a lot of high mileage so we're actually going to replace them so we got to take off uh, the caliper and the brake uh, disc and then we'll be able to get to the wheel bearing behind this brake disc so let's get these taken off and I'll show you what measurements they are so what you're going to need is 14 right here and right here to get the actual caliper off with the brake uh, and everything that comes off. And then the bracket is in the back and it's at 14 as well and there's just two bolts that are holding this inside bracket on. And then you should be able to get the caliper off and it'll come right off and it'll expose the wheel bearing look like this. And you'll be you'll have access to get to these four bolts on the back side and then it should come off and so this is what the new one's gonna look like it's just the four bolts right there that'll hold it in and then uh, you'll pretty much be done with it and then there's the bearing so we'll make sure you keep everything clean don't or get your brake uh, rotor messed up or dirty or anything just keep it as clean as possible and keep up with everything so I'm gonna take this one off and then show you what it looks like off. So this is what it looks like once you get the wheel bearing off. And this is my old one. I mean, if you spin it, you can feel it. It's just rubbing. It's really rough. It doesn't feel smooth when you turn it. So we're gonna put this one in, but before we're going to put some grease around here. That way it stays smooth going in. I'm just gonna put a little bit there and then a little bit on here. And I'm just going to mount it back on and tighten it up. So, I'm going to get to it. So, I kind of filled it up in the inside with grease and around the outside. Filled the whole inside with grease. So, I'm going to put it back in and get it all tightened up. So, this is what the bearing sounds like before. And then, and this is after. so much quieter than 
those old ones so so now that you get your wheel bearing and everything on you start reassembling everything the way you took it off but don't forget to twist this back in the caliper so you can get the brake shoes on and then also make sure you're using loctites on a loctite on every single bolt because you do not want these to come back off because that will be a bad day you won't have any brakes so and if you need to i uh, just put some brake clean on here and clean up your rotor if it did get dirty or your brake uh pads or any of that so i'm gonna com continue to finish this up and we'll see what it looks like when it's already on So the wheels and tires are back on, but there's one last thing that needs to be put on to make this, oh, to complete this. And that's what they look like. So it's a few weeks later, and uh, I have been rubbing the tire on them because they're a little wide for the car. So I actually was looking on Facebook and found some Skunk 2 rear camber arms. So I'm actually going to throw those on the car. They're still in their plastic and everything, so they're brand new. The guy just had them laying around and never put them on. So I'm going to put them on to keep from eating the rest of the tire up. And there it's on both sides. You can actually see it on this side too a little bit. But uh, So I don't want to keep messing up my brand new tires. So we're going to throw these on now. So it's actually a 14 right here to drop the knuckle off from the uh, arm. And then there's actually two back here, one on each side that holds the other side of the camber arm in. Uh, so I'm gonna take that off and then I'll show you what it looks like. So out with the old and in with the new. And it is 14 all the way around. Uh, so it's just all 14s to get this out three bolts and it's super simple so I'm gonna get it thrown in and see what it looks like so make sure you do put these little kind of spacers in they just slide in right here that way when it goes when it goes into place it doesn't move back and forth it's a pretty tight fit so make sure you do that too I just want to make sure that everyone's aware of that I know it's a simple thing but you can easily or not do it so uh, I'm almost done and then we'll have them on all right so this is what it looks like in and you can adjust it right here you just gotta redo it each time I just want to see how the fitment's gonna be with it all the way in see how much camber it gives me see if I can clear with the wheels so I'm gonna put the wheels and tires back on and see what it looks like so this is what it looks like with the camber arms on and it's all the way maxed in but it's still gonna hit in the same spot it's the uh, i honestly think these camber arms are for if you have like a lot of uh positive camber or negative camber i meant and you want to bring it out uh whereas i want to bring it in so it doesn't really work i think i just have too big of uh wheels and tires so 
So I guess I'm just gonna have to figure out another way of running these, but uh, this is what it all looks like buttoned up. Uh, and with the everything, the wheels, the tires, and the camber arms, and then also the coolovers. So that's what it'll look like. Hey guys, it's me again. Uh, thank y'all for sticking around to the end of the video. I know there's not very many of y'all that are sticking around to the end of the video, but I do want to say I appreciate it to those that are. Uh, and if you have made it this far, like, comment, and hit the notification bell for upcoming videos. Uh, I'm going to try and keep putting them out every two weeks. Uh, I'm falling a little bit behind, but I'm trying to stay on that grind. And I do have a... Uh, few more videos for the Civic to come out but uh, then I'm gonna be hitting that 350Z grind and trying to get it ready for this summer so you definitely don't want to miss that so hit that notification bell I'm telling you you don't want to miss it uh, but I know this video was a little bit all over the place uh, I went from the wheels to the wheel bearings to the camber arms and I, I know I hope y'all all kind of followed along and it wasn't too confusing uh, it's all 14 millimeter uh, bolts and they just come out real easy and oh for me they were easy you may have to uh, use a little bit more pressure than I did but uh, they came out easy everything was pretty easy and moderate uh, compared to what you could do on a car uh, and I just had fun doing it so I hope y'all had fun watching it and I hope it helped y'all as well because uh, I, I do it for y'all but I also do it for myself as a documentary of what I've done but it is for y'all and I hope it does help y'all. So I, that's all I got to say for now. I'll see y'all in the next video and peace out.